Hello programming students. Uh, this lecture I'd like to cover a little bit about the check boxes and radio buttons just to give you a little bit of an idea about how they work just in case if you want to go in above and beyond with your assignment and uh, put in some functionality with them so when, sh when you're doing your Chipotle ordering screen if if you want to be able to calculate a price for the order or um, based on which what they pick or if they want to add add to the price like I don't know how often you go to Chipotle but like avocado or extra meat or guacamole is extra so things like that so I'd like to just give you a little bit, a bit of insight on how that works I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to our form here and I'm gonna use as a starting point our invoice total application so I want to add in a, a, a couple components and it's not going to make I'm just going to I'm just going to throw in some logic just to show you how it works with a, a radio button and a checkbox so let's scroll down to a radio button here in the toolbox so notice on the left hand side here it's all ordered alphabetically I'm going to go down to the R's for a radio button I'm going to click and we're going to, going to go ahead and put it on the form. Um, let me make the form a little bit bigger so I can go ahead and add some check boxes too. Excuse me while I move around components here. Usually radio buttons you want to have uh, more than one it only makes sense to really have more than one radio button on a form because usually you're choosing between one, two, or three things or one or the other. So usually you have them grouped together and to it'll make a little more sense. Sorry, I'm fumbling around here a little bit. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to say. When I go ahead and start the application, you'll notice that you, uh, you have your two radio buttons here, neither of them are checked. I can check one of them, I can check this one. It doesn't really have any functionality. It's also a little helpful if we go here and we put this group box around it. It gives a little bit more context to the radio buttons. You can give them, uh, you can give the group box some text. So I'll throw a couple radio buttons in here in the group box. So then when you move the group box, it moves the radio buttons with them. And you can actually give this group box a text property as well. So this could be for your Chipotle application. It could say um, beans for this group box. And notice it changes this to beans. And then your radio buttons could be called something like um, black beans and pinto beans. So now this gives the user the context within this group box you should choose the type of beans and would you like black beans or pinto beans in your in your bowl. So notice this makes it required for them to pick one or the other so it might make more sense to have them check boxes so in case they might not want either bean. So again, it, it, it's all how you design your application. I'm going to change this to, um, I'm going to leave group box one because I'm really never going to use it in code, but I will make this premier customer. And it's only going to go through this discount percent um, logic if they're a premier customer. So let's change this to yes and no. So let's also add a checkbox on here. And we're going to see if uh, whatever they ordered is a gift maybe so they have a subtotal for their let me make, like maybe this is Amazon they spent three hundred dollars 
on Amazon or whatever, and maybe they want this thing to be a gift, a gift, and they want it gift wrapped before they send it to you. I'm going to say, is this order a gift? I'll make this uh, checkbox gift. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the name of these radio buttons so I can access them in code. I usually use the prefix rad uh, so I know that they're radio buttons. I'm going to say rad yes. And I'll change this one to rad no. <clears throat> so now I only want to go through this logic to calculate a discount if they're a premier customer. They only get a discount if they're a premier customer. If they're not a premier customer, so maybe they're on my website as a guest, or they haven't spent enough money to become a premier customer, they're not going to get this discount percentage. I'm going to go ahead and have no checked by default. That way, if they don't check it, they don't get a discount. So I'm going to say enabled, and uh, not enabled. Checked is true. So there is a checked property on our radio buttons and also our check boxes. You can come and see a checked property as a checked property of true or false. And that's how we're going to figure out whether or not it's checked in code. So let's go ahead and save it. And I'm going to go into my code backend and actually throw logic around all of this. That it only goes through this discount percent logic if they're a premier customer. So I'm going to go ahead and discount percent is zero. And if rad yes dot checked. So if my radio button yes is checked that they are in fact a premier customer. I'm going to throw this logic in there. Let me go ahead and fix the formatting. That way you can tell it's indented. Okay, so now if they are a premier customer, I want to go through this discount percent logic. And if they're not a premier customer, it's not going to go through this logic. And it's going to go ahead and take my discount percent of zero and still go through my calculations here. So let's check to make sure that worked. All right, my subtotal is going to be 250. Let's make it 200. I don't remember what my logic says. My logic says if it's less than or equal to 200, I should get 10%. So I'm not a premier customer, so let's make this a yes. So I should get my 10% discount. Let's calculate. Yep, and in fact, I did get my 10% discount. So let's go back again and say I'm not a premier customer and I spent $225 so I should get a 20% discount. Let's calculate. Well I should not get a 20% discount because I'm not a premier customer. And Yep, in fact I did not get my 20% discount or any sort of discount amounts. My total is still $225 because I check this no radio button, it comes here and notices that rad yes dot checked is false, it returns false, so it skips all of this logic and takes my 0% discount percent. Okay, so then this checkbox, much like the radio buttons, act in the same manner. Before I calculate all of this, uh, the discount can still be the same amount, but I want to add some logic that says if my checkbox gift is checked, I want to, let's do this after I calculate the total, actually. So if the gift checkbox is checked, I want to add five dollars to the total because it cost me five dollars for the wrapping paper and the person to wrap the gift 
and whatever else. So I'm going to add five more dollars to that. Let's go ahead and hit start. I'm not a premier customer. I'm going to spend $225. This is a gift. So my total should be $230. So $225 without a discount plus five. And in fact, here's my $230 total. So that's how check boxes and radio buttons work. I wouldn't worry about too much about all of the other things check boxes and radio buttons do. Just as long as you know how to tell whether or not they're checked is the most important part. They work just like any other component does. They have a text property and name, whether or not they're checked. Um, I wouldn't spend too much of your time memorizing all of the properties, memorizing all of the components in the toolbox. That can get a, a very overwhelming, and it's really not that important uh, this, at this point in your programming education. What the most important thing is, and what I want to get, want you to get most out of all of this, is just how to interact with these objects that you put on this form in the code. That's the most important part. How do I interact with these objects in the code? So really focus on that, really master that, and you should be well on your way to doing well in this course. So thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next week.